Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel. It is now time to look at every single deck that got day two at EUIC. Of course, I just did a video where we looked at all of the top eight decks, but now it's time to look at every single other deck in day two outside of the top eight and beyond. Now, there was over 2,600 players in this tournament. In fact, the day two had 273 players. So there is a lot of decks to look at here. We're going to look at every single one of them. I'm going to kind of try to keep things brief as we get closer and closer to the end and we kind of just see a bunch of repeats of decks. Uh, but we're going to analyze each deck, talk about the inclusions and the cards and all that stuff. And I think there's a lot of good variety. I've already taken a bit of a glance. And there is a decent amount of variety of decks that made Day 2 at EYC being the first rotation tournament. And, of course, being one of, if not the largest tournament of all time. And if you want to watch the video where I looked at the top 8 decks, make sure to go check that out after this. And if you all are new here to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We're on the road to 13,000 subs. And leave a like on the video if you want to enjoy. I'll leave a link to Limless here, the site I am using for today's video in the description. Starting things off, we have the ninth place deck here. Outside of top 8 was a Gardevoir deck. Of course, Gardevoir was one of the best decks in the previous format, but now Gardevoir obviously has gone a little bit weaker, but it still ended up almost getting top 8 at EUIC regardless. As you can see here, it is using the Drifloon, the Screamtails, and the um, HP modifier cards. And of course, Drifloon does do 30 damage, reach damage counter on it, and you can combine that with Gardevoir EX's ability. If you put a Hero's Cape, a Bravery Charm, or even a Luxurious Cape onto your Drifloon, you can take a big 1 KO in a combination with Gardevoir. You still have Screamtail, which can be a nice snipe attacker. Gardevoir EX can be a good attacker too. You have some extra slowdown cards in the deck. There is that one of Klefki. You got the Fluttermane in the deck, all of which can slow your opponent down um, quite a bit in the early game. Fluttermane being really good against Lost Box. So we'll have to see if Gardevoir can keep up this momentum going into future tournaments. The one thing that does hold Gardevoir back ultimately is that you do have to worry about Lost Vacuum. That is one of this deck's biggest Achilles heels. Of course, when you attack with Drifloon with a tool on it to give it more health, you eventually can get vacuumed and your Drifloon can get KO'd by Lost Vacuum. And that's the biggest downside of um, Gardevoir, but it did do really good at EYC. I think it was just a very solid play because nobody was really respecting or teching for Gardevoir. It's not really a deck people had on their minds. I'm sure, um, you know, if Fabian here was playing against somebody and he flipped over Clefki or, you know, Mimikyu or Fluttermane, they would immediately think that it was like Control or something or Ancient Box, not Gardevoir. So you got a bit of a surprise factor with the deck, which is cool. Um, and then, of course, we do have another Future Hands outside the top 8. This one did have a Iron Leaves in the deck to try to help a little bit more against the Charizard matchup, which is ultimately Iron Hands' biggest weakness is Charizard. And there were two Future Hands within top 8 of EYC, and we looked at those decks. But I do think that this deck does have a tough matchup in a Charizard. But having something like Iron Leaves in the deck does help your Charizard matchup a little bit more. We got another... Well, our first Ancient Box, actually. I want to say another one, but I forgot. Ancient Box did win in the Seniors Division. But yes, there was an Ancient Box outside of the top 82 in top 16. And Ancient Box is looking like a pretty solid deck right now. It does a lot of damage with the Roaring Moon. Its biggest weakness is, like, its consistency because your engine is literally the Radiant Greninja. But this, like, Poke Stop engine with the Sada and the Explorer and the Poke Gears kind of works, in my opinion. But I underestimated how good... Pokestop truly is within Ancient Box, and it's proving to be really strong. Like I said, Ancient Box did end up getting first place in the Seniors Division at EYC, so this deck definitely has legs going forward. I think these Ancient decks, the Roaring Moon double deck that got top 8 and the Ancient Box deck here, I think are both decks that are going to see a little bit more play going into Orlando Regionals this weekend. So I'm definitely excited to try this deck out. I think Ancient Box is pretty solid right now. Um, maybe this art matchup is tricky, especially now that, like, the Tord build is playing two Turos, which really does suck for a deck that has to two-shot Charizard a lot of the time. So, that could be a bit of an issue, but other than that, I think this deck has good matchups across the board. It's Lost Tina matchups, probably pretty solid, too, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, pretty strong deck. And then we got a Lost Box deck here, piloted by Pedro, of course. Now, Pedro did play the Lost Box deck with all of the different attackers, the Moon, the Raikou, the Hands, the Hoopa, but he also played a Mew EX, and I really like the Mew. I actually played Pedro's deck to a local tournament 
this past Saturday went four and one, and I actually kind of liked it. I mean, the the Mew is really solid against Charizard. Um, I think the Mew makes the Zard matchup even more winnable because like your lines against Zard are sometimes use Hands and Moon, maybe even use the Iron Bundle against them in the late game. But I really like the idea of Mew because basically, if you can force Charizard down to one prize remaining, you can use Mew to copy Burning Darkness and KO them back. So I think the Mew is very good for the Zard, and it also helps a lot against Tina, which ended up being really good this weekend. So I do think going forward, I think that having a Mew EX in your Turbo Lost Box deck is going to have to be mandatory in order to keep up with stuff like Tina and Charizard. Um, we got another Pidgey Zard deck here. Looks like we got, you know, the normal technology. It is the double Rodon build, not playing in the Cleffa. We'll have to see how many Cleffas there are here outside of top eight, because obviously, you know, there were two Cleffas in the Zard decks, but this one does have the double Rodon, which was pretty common, actually, um, in the online tourney scene, and uh, this Zard deck did end up doing it pretty good. I mean, Zard was his BDIF for this tournament. And of course, we have Azul here with the Lost Tina deck, not like Bradner's list with the Bayonet EX. This one is a little bit more straightforward, um... Very straightforward, to be honest with you. Just kind of simplistic build. Got the Iron Leaves. Got the Tina's. Two Temple of Sinnoh. Two Roxanne. Floor Chorus. Kind of looks like an old version of Tina, pretty much. You know, sub out Temple, obviously, with Path or whatever. And then you got the Iron Leaves. But Tina was a great call for this tournament. It could have won the entire tournament. It has a really good Charizard matchup. Um, and it seems pretty good against other decks, too. So it definitely seems like Lost Tina is going to be on the rise again. I mean, I predicted this deck was going to be good for this tournament. And it ended up doing really, really well. So, you know kind of called it this deck was very good for uh this tournament and i think lost tina going forward is going to continue to see a lot of play especially when big names like azul and bradner popularize the deck even more i think it's going to incentivize a lot of people to just play the deck for like orlando and stuff um another future hands in top 16 so yeah future hands is definitely a legit deck i think it's like not a fake deck but it feels like a lot of people don't really respect it as much as they should considering there was like four of these in top 16 so definitely a pretty scary deck to keep your eye out on and we'll have to see where future hands continues going forward this build is interesting playing a gift energy to kind of offset it's like bricky nature we had another uh Dunspar's moon deck here in top 30 or top 16 pretty cool stuff pretty cool deck i like it a lot um i'm happy that this deck ended up doing good this weekend and uh yeah hopefully we see more of this moon dunspar stack going forward and then sadly my friend julian got 17th place bubbled out of top 16 lost the winning into top eight with the rcs armor rouge deck but it is a really cool way to play rcs v-star it's actually the best performing rcs deck at euic i mean everybody was hyping up arctina for this tournament i think arctina is actually still good and we'll get into it later in into this video obviously when we talk about arctina but i think arc armor rouge is pretty solid i actually did a video on this deck on my main channel yesterday so if you want to go watch that make sure to go watch that video because i did play this deck kind of went over some of the the lines you have because there is a lot of things going on in this deck there's a lot of different attackers and there's a lot to do with this deck but it's a very solid deck um Julian did lose the winning into that Roaring Moon Dunsparce deck, which I do think probably is a bad match for this deck. I actually think that Arc Piles in general are going to struggle against these ancient box decks because the Roaring Moons and stuff are like, kind of annoying for like Arcs to deal with. But really cool Arc list, and um, yeah, really happy to see um, Arc Armor Rouge in the spotlight. We got Piper here with another Guardi list, uh, a bit different than Fabian's. Does have the Mew EX in the deck, no Klefki or Fluttermane. Um, the Mew's really nice, obviously really good against Zard. If you can force Charizard down to one prize remaining, you can obviously KO them with that Mew EX for 330 damage. Might actually be a pretty good staple going up forward. Because, like, Mew wasn't really something you needed in Gardevoir to help Charizard pass format because you had Zacian and Shining Arcana. But now that you don't no longer have those options, you might need that big late-game swinger with that Mew EX against Charizard. So that's definitely a really nice inclusion within the Gardevoir deck, too. There's a lot of different Pokemon you could play. We got Caleb here. Pretty much the same 60 as Azul, obviously, uh, with that Lost Tina. Um, and then, of course, we had Shen Pao here, the highest place in Shen Pao. Now, Shen Pao was very popular at EUIC, um, but it didn't make top eight. It, I didn't say it underperformed. It still did decent, to be honest. Like, it still got, like, almost top 16. It was a very popular deck. I think it was just a little too heavily targeted slash respected, where it got to the point where I think Shen Pao kind of just had a target on its back, which I think is a problem for Shen Pao. Like, if Shen Pao's going to be heavily targeted for regionals, that's pretty bad, because this deck already has consistency issues, so when you pile on top of the fact people are teching for it, it's kind of problematic, but it's still a very strong deck, in my opinion, and when the deck sets up and does what it needs to do, this deck is like best deck in the format and it probably still holds a good matchup against charizard going forward to be honest with you 
Uh, next up, we got another guardy. A couple guardies here. Got this build here, playing the Klefki, the Miss, uh, the Flutter main, almost a Miss Drevis. Um, yeah, looks like it's similar to Fabian's list. Got the Eerie and stuff, the Mimikyu, Klefki, Flutter main combo in the deck. No Mew EX or anything like that. Uh, with Stefan's list here, we got our first Lugia deck here. So this is another big story. Lugia did not perform as well as everyone expected it to. It still got top 32. It didn't, like, bomb the tournament, but it didn't do as well. I think a lot of people hyped the deck up. I mean, I even I was saying Lugia is one of the best decks for EUIC. Now, I did say it was one of the best decks for EUIC, but I was thinking it's probably not going to hold the best deck. I, I knew Charizard was best deck for the tournament, and I knew post-EUIC Charizard still probably one of the best decks for the tournament. Lugia kind of underperforming, though, is a sign that this deck is not as good as people think it is. And I think one of the problems with the deck is Iron Hands is very popular. The Turbo Hands deck destroys this deck, and so does Lost Box, and so does even the uh, Shampoo decks, because they also have Iron Hands. So Lugia does have a lot of bad matchups. I, I think the Charizard matchup is probably a little unfavored, too, to be honest with you. Even with Sinchino, it's still probably a little tough. I think Tordzard probably beats Lugia. Um, but yeah, I think Lugia still is like an okay deck. The only thing I think that this deck has going for it is it probably has a good matchup against something like the uh, Giratina Lost Box deck, which is a big bonus. This deck probably beats Giratina Lost Box. And we see the highest placing build here. Did have a lot of other attackers than just Sinchinos and Lugias. Did have a Luxray, which is good for Mir and good against Pidgeot. And then you had the Mew EX too, another really cool card that uh, Lugia can also abuse, obviously. And we had another Zard list here. This is where things got spicy. So the big story in day one of EUIC was there was a lot of players playing the Charizard Reggie Lecky deck. And this is actually the same deck that got uh, second place in the seniors division. It was a bit of a different list, but it still had the Reggie Lecky. The idea behind Reggie Lecky is essentially it's here to help you beat um, control. So basically against control, you can use electromagnetic sonar to put a trainer back in your hand. And essentially what you do is you just keep getting Penny back over and over again. And... Uh, you know, Snorlax goes Counter Catcher, and then you go Penny that Pokemon, go back into Regilecki, and then use Regilecki to get the Penny back in your hand, and you, they run out of Counter Catchers eventually. And Regilecki can get back other trainer cards like Rare Candy, Super Odd, Counter Catcher, even Supporter cards. Um, the Regilecki is good against normal Snorlax, but against Pidgeot Control, it's pretty useless because you'll just get Luxray into Oblivion. So it's definitely an interesting inclusion. It's better into a Snorlax heavy control meta but now that the Pidgeot control is like the better way to play it I don't see the Reggie Lecky lasting it might have just been a one-time thing for this tournament but it's a really cool tech card we got Braden Elford here with the spicy Espathra Bayonet deck a deck that does do you know has been doing good in the online tourney scene and did you know cross over to a top 32 finish at EUIC really cool list here of course Espathra being really good against Charizard also being really good against ancient decks too and future like that's one of the things I like about the Espathra while it's really good against Charizard it's also good against those ancient and future decks which I think though both two decks are going to go up in stock during Orlando so that's a good thing for Espathra and then of course Bayonet just being you know very good against Shem Shempao um, which is one of Espathra's worst matchups. I'm not sure this deck is going to have a good time at a lost Tina. Maybe the deck has to adapt going forward, because I think your Tina matchup is probably going to be a little difficult, but it is really cool to see Espathra do so well in EUIC, and it is sick to see it get a Limitless page. Yeah, I love it. So, cool stuff, cool stuff. Espathra is pretty sick. And, I mean, Charizard's still going to be popular. One EUIC, maybe maybe we'll see Espathra in Day 2 at Orlando. we got another Zard or Regilecki deck here. Um, once again, I think a lot of the top players were kind of same 16 the list. There are a couple different takes on Reggie Lecky uh, we'll get into in a minute, but yeah. We got our first look at a different arc pile here that was in Armor Rouge, and this one's actually an Arceus control deck. Now, this is a really cool deck. It's not really like an arc build up a big Pokemon and start doing big damage. It's actually more about trying to make your opponent, you know, run out of resources. So it does play three Eerie, which is very heavy disruption. It's also got Grabber in the deck to remove your opponent's resources. It's also playing... Luxray V in the deck, which of course can, you know, snipe trainers out of the hand. So a very interesting control deck here. An arc control lock style deck is a really interesting take on Arceus, but it is cool to see this deck do well. It's probably kind of difficult to play, to be honest, but it is really sick to see this type of arc deck do well. It's, it's a, just a different take on the deck. It's not Arceus build up big VMAX V-Star Pokemon, Ooga Booga do damage. It's about trying to run your opponent out of resources with Luxrays and stuff. It does have that slacking V in the deck, which is obviously a very heavy hitter. And then it's got the Flutter main for some extra disruption options. Yeah, really cool deck. Even playing Hero's Cape as the A-Spec over a Maximum Belt, which is usually the A-Spec you would see within an Arc deck. So that's kind of cool. We got another Shampoo list here. Once again, um, pretty straightforward list with Iron Hands. Um, 
We got another Pidgeot control with the Cloth EX. Now that's kind of cool seeing Cloth get day two here at EUIC. That's kind of cool. I don't know this card already had a limitless page, but hey, now it does. So yeah, Cloth EX um, is an interesting control card. Essentially, every time your opponent attacks into it, um, you discard energy from the attacking Pokemon. So this could be good even, even to Char like Charizard, right? Because like they can't one shot Cloth. Um, if you have like a HP buff on it, they can't knock it out. I guess they can maximum belt you, which is annoying. But I guess now that they're playing Prime Catcher, Cloth is not as worried about that, which is kind of cool. And then you can run Charizard out of energy that way. So that's kind of cool. So very interesting Pidgeot list. A couple more Charizard lists to look at here. A bit more of a straightforward build with the double Rotom. Does have the Prime Catcher. And then we got another uh, Charizard list here with the Eerie, the Turo, um, TM Devo, Maximum Belt, and stuff like that. There's going to be a lot of Charizard lists we're going to go over here. We got another Shen Pao list once again, and then we have another Shen Pao list, but this one did have the Arctabax in the deck, and the Arctabax is really smart because it does play around Eerie, and it plays around TM Devolution. So, because one of the things Shen Pao, you know, its biggest weakness is TM Devos and Eerie. Sometimes you can literally lose the game to an Eerie. Your opponent will Eerie Rare Candy away, and then they can start sniping your Baxcalibers with boss, and eventually you're going to run out of Baxcalibers, and then you're going to run out of Steam, and you're going to be unable to keep up in the match and you're just going to lose because you're just not able to get Bax Calibur out. But when you have Arctabax the deck, you're playing around the TM Devos, you're playing around the Eeries because you're not worrying about rare candy as much when you can just go Frigibax, Arctabax, Evolve into Bax Calibur. So really cool stuff. Very interesting technology. This might have to be how Shen Pao has to be played going forward. Even just for insurance, there was also Silene in the deck to help get back stuff like the rare candies if you do get randomly eerie, or even just getting back like an extra retrieval. Because that's Shen Pao's biggest weakness. That's why I said it had a target on its back. TM Devos, the Reggie Lecky TM Devo in the Charizard decks, and Eerie's popularity was really bad for Shen Pao this weekend. We got another Lost Tina here. Once again, pretty straightforward list. Not having any Temple of Sinnoh and playing an Iono in that one. Another Pidgeot Control with the Cloth and a Great Tusk. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Not quite sure what the Great Tusk is for, per se. Um, it's cool to see this card get a Limitless Page. I'm pretty sure this is the first time Great Tusk has gotten a Limitless Page. It's kind of a pretty vanilla card. Not very good, but it is cool to see it. I'm not sure what it's useful is. I, I would imagine the first attack is what it's used for, right? To get rid of a Stadium card, I guess? I'm not sure. But it's cool, nonetheless. And, uh, yeah, cool stuff, cool stuff. It's got the Cloth in there, too. Um, another Tina list here. Iron Bundle in the deck. No Temple of Sinnoh. Couple more Lugias. Once again, Lugia not having the greatest showing of this at UIC, considering how hyped up it was. But this one does have Maximum Belt as the A spec, and that's one thing I like about Lugia. There's actually a lot of options for A spec cards. Another Lugia here playing the Cinchinos and Master Ball this time. Another Shampao. Once again, Iron Hands. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Um, another Zar deck. Once again, playing the Reggie Lucky. Now this build does have a little bit more control elements in it. It's also playing Reversal Energy Luxray. That could be pretty good in the mirror match because actually. You'll notice the deck only plays a 2-2 line of Charizard EX. So it's not playing that very thick line, you know, the 4-1-3 line. It's actually got 2-2 Charizard. So it kind of leans more into these other niche attackers like the Reggie Lecky for the control with the double Eerie in the deck. You got the Penny and the Turo. And, of course, the Reversal Energy Luxray, which can pop up a lot in the mirror match. That's that's really interesting. Really interesting Zard list here. There's a lot of really spicy takes on Zard this weekend. We got another Ancient Box deck. Uh, this one does have that Slitherwing in the deck. Still playing the Pokestop. No boss, though. Does, however, play four Gusting cards. No Awakening Drum. Opting for Prime Catchers and three Counter Catcher. More Tina action here, once again. Play the Artisan Temple of Sinnoh Split. Another Shen Pao list here. With four rare candies. Yeah, so going very heavy on the candies there. That does help against Eerie and obviously against Team Devo. Even playing three Baxcalibur. So really trying to just get Baxcalibur into play and trying to play around any other shenanigans where they just keep targeting Baxcalibur over and over again. Another Zard list here. Playing a, a Minior in the deck. Does have that Turo. Does have the Eerie. But yeah, the Minior in the deck helping a little bit against the control matchup. And then uh, another Pidgeot control. Ooh, that's cool. It's got the Zubat. All right, Zubat's kind of funny. Once you're in turn, if it's in the active spot, you can look at your opponent's hand. Kind of cool. When you're playing a control deck, having hand knowledge at all times is very, very powerful. So that's a really interesting inclusion within the deck. And that does help a lot. That can actually really give you information as to what you want to do in a turn. Like if you want to play Erica or Eerie or Iona or whatever you want to do. It's kind of cool, kind of cool. Another uh, Turbo Hands. Pretty straightforward list here. Looks like getting day two. A couple more Shen Pals to look at. Uh, this one here has got the hands and stuff. And we got another Shen Pao list here with the Cypher Maniac 3 Candies, um, stuff like that. Okay. Another Ancient Box, once again, playing the uh, Sada Guidance. No uh, boss in the deck, but does have Double Counter Catcher and Prime Catcher. Also playing some Trekking Shoes in the deck for some extra discard synergy and some consistency, too. 
Um, we got three Zards to go through here real quick. This Zard's got the Turo and the Shiyu in the deck for the extra mill potential. We got another Zard here with the Regilecki. But okay, this is where things get spicy, actually. I'm pretty sure this was Cal. Yeah, this is Cal Connor. So Cal was playing a bit of well, Shovel Squad in general. I think Zach and Cal were both playing this really spicy Zard control list. Now, it wasn't like the Zard list we saw with the Reggie Lecky, you know, more straightforward. This one does have a little bit of extra control in it. It does play the Hero's Cape as the A spec. Can be very annoying to give your Charizard a lot of HP. It's got the Lost City. It's also playing Giacomo and Eerie in the deck, so very much a control deck at its heart. Because it does have a lot of control elements in the deck. I guess the Giacomo, or Giacomo, whatever you call it, could be really good against Mist Energy when you want to go for that big TM at Devo play with the, uh, the, the TM Devo in the Mirror Match. That's kind of spicy. More, yeah, more standard Zard list here. It's got the double Charmeleon in the deck, though. Another future box deck playing uh, two Cynthia's Ambition. Fascinating. There's no research actually opting for the double Cynthia. Cool, cool. We got a couple uh, Tinas here. Wow, Tina with a Raikou. I mean, I guess this gets the job done against Charizard. Oh, it's got Iron Hands, too. What the heck? Okay, it's actually got a lot of technology in the deck. It's got Hands, Raikou in the deck. So, I mean, that does help a lot against... Uh, Charizard, you got Iron Leaves, you got Raikou, you got Star Requiem for Charizard. A lot of ways to deal with Charizard. Um, then we got Grand Manly once again. Pretty much same 60, um, too. So, playing that. Well, not the same 60 as the one we looked at. This is Zool's list. We got Jared, of course, one of the Shempow stands. Some interesting cards in the deck. He is playing a Ditto in the deck to try to get, like, an extra Shempow because he can Buddy Buddy Poffin for it. And then there's Boxes, Boxed Order. Box, I almost said Boxes Order. <laughs> Boxes order. Yo, that's that's a sick name. Uh, Search your deck for up to two items. Reveal them and put them in your hand. Your turn ends if you do this. So you play this card. You don't get eeried randomly or Ionode. You can get a rare candy back's caliber. The following turn guaranteed. It's also Spirit Tomb of the deck, respecting the Zard matchup even more. We got our first more normal Snorlax control deck here at EYC. Um, yeah, Snorlax was a good play for the tourney, but it turns out Pidgeot was the better play. And uh, this build still did decent. Pretty vanilla build here of Snorlax. Well, not vanilla, but it's very, like, simplistic, right? It's got the got crushing hammer, though, for some extra energy removal, obviously. Um, we got another Lugia here to look at. 2-2 two, two Lugia. Wow. Very thin count of Lugia. Really trying to lead into the Cinchino. It is like four Morty's Conviction, though, for that discard synergy for Archeops. I'm a fan of that. I like the idea of Morty within Lugia. The 2-2 two, two Lugia line, eh, a little sus, but yeah, it's cool, cool. Another Zard here, once again, playing the Reggie Lecky. It's got the Prime Catcher, stuff like that. You got the Penny and everything. Um... Another Zard here, not playing Reggie Lecky. It just has the Rodom, the Luminion. It's got the Turo and the Eerie in the deck still, though. We got another Future Hands deck once again. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, another Zard deck once again. Another very, yeah, very straightforward Zard list. No Reggie Lecky technology in that one, though. We got a Lost Box deck. Now, this one is a Roaring Moon Iron Hands deck. So there's no Hoopa, no Mew, nothing like that. Just sticking to double Roaring Moon and Iron Hands. And the double moon will obviously help a lot against Charizard because now you have two Roaring Moons to take out the Charizard. So that's interesting. Yeah, I like it. Double moon does go hard. I mean, sometimes having two moons is nice because sometimes the opponent doesn't expect double moon. And you don't have to rely as heavily on like super rotting the moon back to kind of loop it over and over when you have two in the deck. So that's kind of cool to see. Um, we got another Pidgeot control. Now, this one's got the Wigglytuff. And this is what we've been seeing in the online tourney scene, seeing the Wigglytuff EX in action. With that huge amount of HP you can get when you have a special energy on it, and you got the Hero's Cape on top of that for the control elements of that deck. We got another Roaring Moon. Now, this one does not play the Da Dunsparce. It's kind of an old-fashioned Roaring Moon deck. It's got the Mew and the Squawkabilly engine within the deck. Obviously, the deck no longer has Galarian Moltres to help you out. Um, but it's been more traditional. It's got the baby Roaring Moon as a nice one prize backup attacker um, within this deck, too. So kind of leading more into the EX as opposed to the single prize option. But still got the job done and still did do decent at EUIC getting day two. We got another future hand deck playing to that one of Iron Boulder. We've been seeing a lot of this in Japan. And it's also got the Raichu V in the deck. Now, Raichu V isn't bad against Charizard. In the late game, that can really help against Charizard because you can kind of take a huge knockout at the end of the game with uh, Raichu to kind of clean up a Charizard, which is, again, one of the future hand's worst matchups. And surprisingly enough, the highest placing Arctina deck was Michael Pramawat here in the top uh, 128, not even top 64. The highest place in Arctina being Michael Pramawat at 68th place is kind of bizarre. I would have thought Arctina would have done a lot better. Surprisingly, it didn't. Now, Arctina does suffer from, like, awkward bricks, and having to rely on Judge as one of your primary draw supporters isn't fantastic. I am surprised to see the deck kind of underperform. I'm, you know, I like the deck. I like it a lot. Um, it's a good deck. It's just kind of surprising to see it underperform like it did. But we'll have to see where Arctina does going forward. Um, or maybe a sleeper deck, who knows? Another Lugia, 
Um, once again, Lugia and Arctina kind of underperforming a little bit this tournament, which is kind of crazy. Another future deck playing the Iron Leaves. A couple more Lugias to go over here. One Lugia there with the Force in Chino. We got another Lugia here once again. Yeah, okay, cool. We got another Shempow. Got my boy Kieran Farah with the Shempow deck. One of the Seapow CEO, or the Seapow founder, I think. Who's C I think it's CEO. Uh, Grand Chen CEO. Yeah, Grand Chen CEO. I think Kieran Farah is the founder. All right, another Lost Box deck here. Playing the Double Moon. Doesn't have the Hoopa in the deck, but does have that Mew EX. Also playing Pokestop in the deck for some extra bit of turbo dig that's kind of a nice stadium I and mean, you can either play the artisan to get basics or you can play the pokestop which can help you dig for your switches your mirage gates and stuff which is kind of cool um pokestop can be grief though that's the only issue um we got vini here with the ancient box deck now it's not the exact same 60 as uh, gabriel's list but it is very similar because obviously they're brothers and they i'm sure they tested the list with each other so it is cool to see ancient box have these good results and we got vini's list here the one difference, I think, between the two lists were uh, Vini plays four Ultra Ball and uh, Gabriel played three Ultra Ball and the Penny in the deck, I think. That was the one difference that they had because Vini plays no switch in the deck. And then we got a, a very interesting a future box deck. So we got a future box deck in day two. I think I predicted that there would be one in day two. And this is definitely a more of a toolbox approach. As you can see, it's just one Iron Hand. It doesn't lean into the hand. It's got that toolbox of attackers. It's got the leaves. It's got the boulder. It's got the hands. Even playing the uh, Iron Treads here, the metal Pokemon being very nice. Again, Shampao can be good in the uh, future hands matchup. It's also a fighting type with its ability dual course. That's really cool to see. Nice, nice. Another Snorlax here. Another just straightforward build of the Lax. Playing them all while too. Um, for some extra trapping. We got a Goldengo in day two. Yay. I don't think Goldengo's dead or anything. It just feels really bad right now against Eerie. Um, and I don't know how good Goldengo is going to be against Charizard because obviously Radiant Charizard is kind of a problem. But Goldengo is a really cool deck and I'm always happy to see it in day two. This build does play the Palkia still. So still playing into the Palkia engine, which I still like a lot. It still has Radiant Greninja in the deck too. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this Goldengo list still. And uh, I'm always happy to see a Goldengo in day two. I think it is, I think the one thing I like about this list is the Silene. I think Silene is kind of mandatory in Goldengo because Goldengo gets hard, hard by Eerie. Because you're probably going to most likely have a Retrieval or two in your hand and you're going to get them Eerie away i've been kind of looking at maybe trying to like a tulip engine for goldengo because you can use tulip instead to get psychic energy back so you have like a way to play around um eerie the problem is you can't play the palkia if you play tulip i mean i guess actually you could you have to play a very thin count of energy you'd have to play like four psychic four water three metal okay bro i might go to the kitchen after this bro i'm just saying uh three more shampoos in a row holy moly right, let's just quickly uh Skim through the Shampows. Oh, wow. Shampow with a 1-1 one, one arc. Haven't seen that in a while. That's cool. Um, and then we got another Shampow here. We got a uh, Bayonet deck. Look at that. The Bayonet Gardevoir deck. Now, this one it has been doing good in the online tourney scene. Um, doesn't look like Mateus was the one playing this deck. I don't know if Mateus played Bayonet to EYC or not or if he got day two. But we do see uh, the Bayonet Guardi deck. Still, honestly, not a bad deck in this format. I mean, Gardevoir, we're still seeing do well. I mean, it almost got top eight at EYC, right? So still obviously a strong deck. It's got the Bayonet EX in there. It's got the double Bayonet package, obviously, the Mew EX. It's more of like a control deck. It's not as not as aggressive as like the Espathor Bayonet or playing Bayonet within Tina. More of a control archetype, but still a very strong deck in my opinion. And kind of an underrated archetype, in my opinion. Um, another Shempow here to look at. Um, we got a Lost Box deck with the Hoopa, the Hands, the Moon. Um, no Mew, though. Just have, I think I saw Pokestop there. Another Zard with Reggie Lecky. Once again, the talk of the town in day one. The Zard, Reggie Lecky. And we got another Lost Box. All right, this one does got the Moon. It's got the five different two prize attackers to choose from within that deck. Um, another Tina here with the Iono, one Temple of Sinnoh. Another Future Hands. Look at that. It's got the Iron Leaves, too, for the Zard matchup. Maybe that's that. But that's what Future Hands maybe adapts now going forward. Just plays the the Iron Leaves. We got the Zard with the 1-1 one, Gengar. So still trying to respect the control a little bit with the 1-1 one, one Gengar. Double Charmeleon, too, is interesting. In fact, it's the double Paldean Fates Charmeleon on top of that, which is interesting. Really playing around the, the TM Devos. Uh, we got another Shempow once again. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the Shempow lists I kind of like think are like mostly figured out mostly, right? It's kind of same 60s. Um, very similar. We got another Zard here playing the Rotom the Lumineon. Uh, another Arctina. So another Arctina, a little bit lower in day two at EUIC. Hate to see it, but it is what it is. Uh, we'll have to see if there's any Arctina Aerodactyls in day two. That's something I want to keep my eye out for too. Uh, another Zard here. Another Lost Tina. Ooh, it's got the Minior in the deck to help a little bit against the hands, maybe, which I guess isn't terrible to have. Then got the Snorlax control deck once again with the Mantine in the deck to force stuff into play. Another Shempow. Quickly uh, skim through that. 
And then we got another ancient box here. Yo, let's go, baby. Another ancient box with the double uh, counter catcher and the prime catcher not playing to the awakening drum. Does have the check and choose within the deck, too. Um, yet another Shampoo list to look at. There we go. And we got another Zard. And then we got another Tina. So, yeah, there we go. Arc Tina, in fact. So this Arc Tina does not have the Aerodactyl. But you know what? Arc Tina's cool. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we'll have to see if there's any Arc Tinas with any other attackers in the deck like Aerodactyl. And the future hands deck. And then we got another Lost Box deck playing the normal attackers. The the Moon, the Hoopa, the Hands. No Raikou or Mew in the deck, though, in that one. And we got another Ancient Box here playing the, uh, yeah, a bit more straightforward build. Let's have the Defiance Band within the deck. That's a card that been not really seen as much in Ancient Box. Some of the Ancient Boxes we've been looking at, actually, so... Ooh, yo, the spice is real. We got a Lost Box deck with a bunch of attackers. You got the Raikou, the Gouging Fire. I'm, By the way, I'm a big fan of the idea of Gouging Fire in Lost Box. I've tested it out before. It's not bad. It's kind of like Dragonite V in a way. You got the Mew EX. It's got the Zamazenta. That's a card we haven't seen in Lost Box in a while, but not a bad attacker against Shempow, obviously, because you can one-shot the Shempow EX, and you can't get return KO'd by Baxcalibur or Iron Hands, which is kind of sick. So that's a really interesting pile. I'm, I'm a big fan of Lost Box piles. What can I say? More, uh, more ancient box here. No boss, triple counter catcher. <clears throat> got another Tina once again with the bayonet. Yeah, we got. We so that was, yeah, somebody in uh, Rahul's group, obviously. Um, and we got the uh, the Zard here with the Shiyu and the Turbo in the deck. So the technology is real. Uh, let's see here. We got a Lugia in day two. Yeah, this one's got the Snorlax. Yeah, okay, cool. Another Shempow once again. Just quickly skim through that. Playing triple Cipher Maniac in that build. Uh, another Lost Box here. Ooh, whoa, whoa. There's a lot to digest here. This Lost Box deck has Rotom V, Maridon, and Raikou, and a Ranguru, and a Double Turbo. Wow, there is a lot to digest. So the idea of Double Turbo isn't terrible, because you can Mirage Gate and then attach DT to Iron Hands, build it up in one turn. Actually, actually, that's a that's a really cool idea, actually, um, in Lost Box. But the Maridon EX is very interesting. Huh. Interesting stuff. I mean, it does require two lightning and a colorless. I mean, you technically can build it up fairly easily. I've never seen that before in a Lost Box deck. That's interesting. Rodon V is kind of cool. I guess you whiff turn one. Uh, Colrus, there you go. Got a bit of an easier way to find it. Got more Zard here. Playing the double Charmeleon in that build, it looks like. Uh, let's see here. More Tina. Yeah, John Aang with the, with the Tina 60 Brander played. Uh, Arctina here. Look at that. Another Arctina. Unfortunately, not doing as well. This one's got a Cypher Maniac in the deck. Com combine that with Bibrel, obviously, to kind of guarantee any cards. Could be good, actually, if you get that, like, turn one. Or you can... Oh, you can Starbirth for it. Huh. I guess if you Starbirth for Cypher Maniac, use Bibrel, you're that's almost like a double Starbirth. That's, that's actually kind of cool. Um, Zard, once again, with the Charmeleon. Got another Snorlax here, playing the Mantine and the Shiyu and stuff. Another Future Hands. No Iron Leaves in that deck. Another Snorlax with the Mantine once again. Another Tina. Yeah, I don't think we'll see any other Tina Bayonets outside of anyone in uh, the Bradner group, obviously. Um, another Ancient Box with, uh, wow, three Research. Okay, three Explorers Guidance, three Research is interesting. Definitely trying to get into the discards quite heavily. I mean, Research can go a long way, obviously, to help discard the resources. All right, another Arctina, playing a Gardenia in the deck. So that's kind of like your pseudo Miss Energy turn one. But Gardenia can also be very good with Iron Leaves. You can kind of have an Iron Leaves out of nowhere. And you can build up Giratina. And, that, yeah, you can build up Giratina out of nowhere, too. That's kind of spicy, spicy stuff. Another Ancient Box here, playing, ooh, Grant and Cobalion is interesting. I guess Grant's pretty good with the double Slitherwing that this deck does play. And it's got the Cobalion, which does help a lot against Charizard. I'm not sure the Cobalion is needed, because a lot of, obviously, the higher placing Ancient Box lists were not playing the Cobalion. So I'm not sure the Cobalion is needed, but if Charizard remains popular, Cobalion might have to be squeezed into the deck to help a lot against Charizard. Because I think it does go a long way to have it against Charizard. Um, especially towards when they have double Turo, which is scary. Yo, Lugia with a Weird Ear V. I don't hate the idea of Weird Ear. Having that big blow-up attack can be pretty useful. Um, so that's nice. That's cool. We got a, uh, another Future Box with the Iron a Boulder within the deck, too. And we got a Dialga Matang. So Dialga Matang popped off on stream. It actually beat Michael Pramerwatt with Arctina. Pretty, like, it was a really quick 2-0. But Dialga Matang having a good performance this weekend. It was kind of cool to see how good is the deck really. Obviously, more of, like, a meme deck. But it definitely is a strong deck. I mean, I'm not saying this deck can't get Day 2. As proven, this deck did get Day 2. I think there's multiple Dialgas in Day 2. So really cool stuff. This finally gives Dialga a chance to push in a little bit to the meta. So really cool. Hopefully we keep seeing Dialgas get Day 2. Um... 
at uh, these uh, tournaments because it's really cool to see it in day two. Happy to see that. Uh, and more Zard. Let's quickly uh, skim through these. Got Zard, and then we got another Zard here. All right, cool. Another Arctina. Pretty straightforward. Let's got the shoes in the deck. Got the shoes. Um, we got Lost Box with the Sables. Oh, Sables are Lost Box, yeah. So similar to what we've been seeing in the online tourneys using the Iron Hands and the Mew EX. We have been seeing this version of uh, Radiant Charizard Lost Box in the online tournament scene, and it did translate well into a day two at EUIC. So this deck definitely is legit. And I like the idea of Mew and Lost Box right now. It's just, again, really good against Charizard, especially when you're playing more of a one-prize approach like this list. Another Arc Armor Rouge in day two. A uh, bit of a different 60 than uh, Julian's list. Does not have Radiant Heran. Instead, is playing Radiant Charizard. And there's also no Gouging Fire. Does, however, play 4-4 four, four Arceus and a Judge and a Buddy Poffin. Which I guess actually isn't a bad idea. You can search out Charconet and Bidoof. I kind of like that, actually. Huh, interesting. All right, we got another Shen Pao here with Minior. And it's also got the uh, Ditto in the deck for some consistency. Look at that. We got another Zard, Bibzard. All right, this Bibzard, first Bibzard in day two. We're not counting towards list because it's not a Bibzard deck, but uh, this is straight Bibzard. And we got the Delphox in the deck for some surprise plays, which I'm sure definitely won this person a lot of games, obviously, because if the opponent, you know, I'm playing against Charizard, I am not benching uh, Manaphy at all. Got more Turbo Hands. We got another Moon at Dunsparce in day two here. Cool stuff. Again, really happy to see this deck do well. We'll see how it does going forward. Another Zard. Ooh, Fluttermane and Zard. So, one again, once again, this is something that, like, Japan's been playing, the one of Fluttermane to kind of slow the opponent down. It might be good against Lost Box. Pretty good, too, maybe against uh, Giratina to slow down Comfies a little bit. Force him into Abyss Seeking, which can be good. More Lost Box here. Yeah, traditional builds. Got the Raikou, the Hands, the Moon, the Hoopa. Got Snorlax. But speaking of control, below that is Ursaluna Control. I love this deck. I did a video on this deck in the past format where it was not as good because I think now this deck actually has potential to do good. Obviously, the idea of Ursaluna, if you don't know what it does, it can loop trainer or it can loop two cards back in your hand with the attack Pete Hunt, which is really, really good because you're able to get back any resources. You can basically just infinitely loop stuff like Charon's Care with the Ursaluna. You have the Pidgeot to guarantee any card you want. You have Hero's Cape to give yourself some HP on top of the Luxurious Cape. You have Miss Energy, so you can't really get, like, cheesed out by, like, an insta-KO on your Ursaluna. So it's a really cool deck, and I'm really happy to see somebody manage to get Day 2 with Ursaluna Control. And maybe down the road this deck could get even better. Who knows? I'm really happy to see an Ursaluna Control in Day 2. That put a smile on my face when I saw that. Uh, we got another Future Hands, and then we got another Bayonet Gardevoir deck here. Kind of eh, looks like it's similar to the 60 we saw earlier. It's got Wasteland. It's got the Screamtail, the Mew, and stuff. So yeah, cool deck. Again, very underrated deck in my opinion. Uh, another uh, Lost Tina playing at the Bayonet in the deck here. Um, yeah, we got Rahul. And then we got the uh, Lugia once again. A lot of Lugia 60s. We got another Arc Tina. Ooh, Misfortune Sisters and Eerie. That's an interesting concept, actually. Misfortune Sisters and Arceus isn't a bad idea because, I mean, if you're not disrupting their hand, you can disrupt the top of their deck, sometimes get lucky, cheese out a few good cards. Really good into the Lost Zone matchups, obviously, to get rid of Mirage Gates. Speaking of Lost Box, got a couple Lost Boxes back-to-back. -back. Yeah, we got more Traditional Build with the Hoopa of the Moon. And once again, we got the Maridon Raikou Oranguru build. So that's crazy stuff, but cool stuff. I love to see the spice. I love it. I love it. Arc Armor Rouge once again. Um, it's Labella, right? No, Oscar? Okay. Um, pretty similar 60 to Julian's list. Does have double Judge, though, in the deck. Cool stuff. I'm loving the Arc Armor Rouge. Um, got Tina once again. Yeah, we'll skim through that. Uh, a couple more Lugias here. Lugia with Radiant Charizard. I like that. If I Honestly, if I'm playing Lugia right now, I'm probably considering playing a one of Radiant Charizard. Um, yeah, I like it. And then we got Lugia with a Mew. Another Shen Pao here. And then uh, another Arc Armor Rouge. Let's go. A couple more of those. Uh, yeah, another Arc Armor. Oh, that was Christian Labella. Okay, that was Labella. Because I know Labella and Julian were playing the same 60 um, to uh, EYC. Another Snorlax Control to look at there. Another Pidgeot Control deck now. This one, actually, it's Sander. Yeah, this is actually Sander. I just realized, yeah. Sander played Pidgeot Control. Not as, like, teched out as uh, we saw Alessandro's list in top four, but does have the double lie part. So the idea of lie part is it does have trade, which can draw you two cards. And the idea of lie part is it actually can't get KO'd by Greninja, which is kind of cool, because obviously there's no mana fee. Within, oh, there, I lied. There's a mana fee. Okay, I lied. Whatever. Anyway, so I think the point of lie part is that it has more HP than Curlia. I think that's the logic behind playing the lie part in the deck. Um, cool, cool. Sanders, the control god, right? So it is cool to see him at least get day two of the control deck. Another future hands, and then uh, another Shen Pao. We got Lugia once again with double Snorlax, four Cinchino. Look at that. Uh, another another Shen Pao, four candies in that one. 
we got another uh, Pidgeot control deck with the Cloth, with the Weekly Tough. Cool stuff, cool stuff, cool stuff. Yeah, the Cloth getting day two is kind of crazy. Uh, interesting stuff. Yeah, another uh, Lugia with the Radiant Charizard. 3-2 Cinchino. A little bit thinner on the Cinchino line there. We got another Arc Armor Rouge. Now, this one does have some more attackers, and it even has some spice. It's got the Iron Hands EX in the deck alongside Luminous Energy and Lightning. So one thing you can do with Armor Rouge is you can move basic energy, but if you have an attacker that requires a bunch of colorless energy and then, like, one energy type, like Iron Hands, for example, you can build it up in a single turn. That is a really interesting Arc Armor Rouge list. Also plays Cobalion Mew to help against Charizard. Because if Zard's at two prizes remaining, you can one-shot the Charizard with the Cobalion and the Mew. So that's also pretty sick. So yeah, nice stuff, nice stuff. Uh, another uh, Lugia, another Shempow here. And then uh, we got another Zard, another Zard. Yeah, more Zard stuff. And then we got another Lugia once again. Again, a lot of like similar 60s. Just kind of skim through these. We got another the one of the Bayonet control decks here once again. And then... Uh, or the Bayonet Tina. I don't know why I said Bayonet Control. I'm tripping. Another Dialga here. So I told you, there's multiple Dialgas within Day 2. This one, a bit more straightforward. Bill's got the Turos, or the Cypher Maniac, sorry, the Ionos. It's got the Jocks in the deck. Jocks are a really interesting card, because, again, you can grab double Matang. You can get Matang Dialga with it. It's got the Mew and the Greninja in the deck for the extra draw engine. And then you got the Zamazenta within the deck, too. So cool stuff, cool stuff. Love to see Dialga get Day 2. Another Ancient Box playing the Cobalion within the deck here. We got more Zards. We'll quickly look at these real quick. Yeah. Ooh. And we got another uh, in a, Tord, Tord 60. Well, not exactly Tord 60, but it's close to what Tord played. It's got the Turo and the Yells cheer. Same concept. The Pidgeot April split. And it played Hero's Cape, though, instead of the uh, the Prime Catcher that Tord played. Another uh, Turbo Lost Box deck. Another Arctina. Straightforward Arctina list. Yeah, Judge Lost Cities actually has a stadium. Another Sable Zard playing the hands and the, the Mew. Like I said, this has kind of been what we've been seeing in the online tourney scene. So cool stuff. Another Lost Box with the, the normal attackers. A couple more Tinas to look at here. Looks like they're yeah, pretty straightforward. Tina list here back to back. Okay. A couple more Zards. We'll look at those. Another uh, Zard with the Pidgeot Bib Split. Cool stuff, cool stuff. And I think that honestly, yeah, another another Zard with Bib Split. That's probably going to be like the optimal way to play Charizard right now going forward is the, the, double, the double split of the two cards. Another Tina. Another Shampoo with the Minior in the deck, too. There you go. And we got another Roaring Moon deck. Um, yeah, kind of more of an Ancient Box deck still. as st Ancient Box style deck, anyways, because it's got the Flutter Mains in the deck. Kind of leans more to the one prize Roaring Moon as the attacker. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Ooh, a Future Lost Box deck. That is spicy. Um, a lot of Future Attackers. I guess the one thing in this deck is there's no Future Booster Capsule, but there's a lot of Future Pokemon, and that is a really cool idea. You got the Iron Crown in the deck. You can even attack with it. Iron Crown has some synergy with Greninja and Sableye. You got the Leaves. You got Crisis Punch. You even got the Maridon, which can actually act as a pretty good attacker because it does 220 damage. Solid damage. You got the Iron Crown to do 240 damage, which can knock out most basics. That's cool, cool stuff. We got my boy Danzo here with the, the Chem Palace. want to shout him out real quick there. Uh, he's the homie. We got another Arctina. And then we got another Arc Armor Rouge below that. Look at that. Another Arc Armor Rouge playing of the Double Judge. Has the Gouging Fire and the Heat Ran, the Del Fox, stuff like that. All right, nice, nice, nice. Another Zard, once again. We got another Shempow. And then we got another Lost Tina. Look at that. Boom. We got another Snorlax with the Shiyu. Another Tina below that. Yeah, a lot of Tina. Like I said, Tina's going to definitely rise in popularity after this weekend. And we got another Dialga in Day 2 with the TM Devos. Or TM Evo, sorry. Not TM Devo. TM Evo. It's got Research, Arvins, Ionos. No Jock in the deck. Um, but cool stuff. Love to see it. Like I said, Dialga's really sick deck. I'll have to see if it continues to keep getting these Day 2s. I think it will. It's a very, like, high roll deck, but when it pops off, it pops off. Ooh, we got a Pidgeysar deck here. Actually playing the Gouging Fire in the deck as a tech card. And has double... Charmeleon, too. Nice, nice. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Another Shempow with the Kyogre. You know, a lot of people kind of talking about Kyogre and Shempow. And it was in that build. They got day two. We got another Pidgeot Snorlax control deck here. It's got double Luxray in the deck and a Lost City. So, yeah, really trying to counter those, like, tech cards to counter the Snorlax, like that Gengar, obviously. Cool, cool. Another uh, Zard here. And then we got another Arctina. Once again, Arctina straightforward stuff. Okay, no Aerodactyls. I'm, I'm looking out for, like, any, like, tech cards in the Arctinas, like Aerodactyls or anything. Ooh, interesting Lugia list playing this Cinchino. What, is it, what does this do, this Minchino? Discard two cool tools from your opponent's Pokemon? Interesting. I guess just, it has 70 HP. I guess that's kind of why you play it, obviously. Um, another Pidgey Control with the Cloth and the Wigglytuff. Look at that, look at that. Another Zard here. The double, the, the TMD bone stuff. 
feature box playing the one of Maridon EX in the deck. We've been seeing this too in the online tourney scene, the Maridon for the extra big heavy hitter you can play. We got another Zard. And then we got another Shempao below that. Ooh, Squovid in the deck. Interesting. That does help the dig potential, I guess, within the deck. Another Tina. Another Zard once again. Bibzard, yeah. If we see the Zard by itself, it's Bibzard, obviously. We got another, another Bibzard in day two here. Another Shempao. And we actually got a Great Tusk Mill in day two. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't know a Great Tusk Mill actually got day two. So kind of an under-the-radar deck right now. I know a lot of people want this deck to be good. It's definitely a decent deck, but, I mean... We'll have to see how well it can do going forward. It did get day two at EUIC. Didn't do as well as maybe a lot of people wanted it to do. Because I think a lot of people were hyping the deck up at first. And only one in day two it looks like. But it's still cool that it got day two regardless. Another Shempao. There's Lost Box here we skipped over. Which is another one of the Maridon Lightning Attacker decks. Interesting. I'm, I wonder how that deck works actually. Um, I guess I guess you can Mirage Gate to Maridon, right? Another Lugia. Another Tina. We got another Shempao below that. And then Lugia. We'll look at that real quick. Yeah. We got a Pidgeot I looked over. Yeah. Another Pidgeot control with the Reggie Lecky in the deck. No cloths or uh, wiggly tufts or anything. It's a bit more of a traditional, straightforward build. Uh, another Zard to look at here. We got another Charizard. Charizard with the Reggie Lecky once again. Uh, there you go. Zach Lesage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I figured. <laughs> another Shempao. Glance over that. Arctina once again. Playing the Judges. Double vacuum, stuff like that. Okay, cool. And a Lost Box. Ooh, wow. A lot of attackers. We got the Groudon in the deck. So Groudon's kind of cool. You can do Magma Perch. Discard up the four energy from this Pokemon, doing 60 damage each energy discard in this way. So it could be a pretty good attacker against Iron Hands. And also can knock out basic EXs because it can do up to 240. And then you got the Shaman V for the Zard matchup. You got the Raikou in the hand still for some Lightning attackers. Like it. I like it. Cool. Another Shempao. Another Snorlax with the Mantine. Arctina once again. Playing the two Lost Cities and stuff. Another Dialga. Here we go. Another Dialga Matang. Ooh, whoa. Weird Ear and Basque Legion. So a little bit more teched out. The Weird Ear kind of can be good, too. You pile a ton of energy and play. Come in with that big Weird Ear. And then you got the Basque Legion to get the energy back. And you got the Basculine to help set your board up. A couple more Zards here. Back to back quickly. Uh, skim through those real quick. The good old Zard. And then we got another uh, Lugia. And then above that, there was actually a Moon Dunsparce deck I missed. But yeah, like I said, really cool stuff. Moon and Dunsparce. Love to see it. Love to see it. Got future hands. Yep, future hands. Okay. We got Lugia. And we got another couple Bayonet Guardi decks back to back here. Ooh, Espathra's in this deck. I like that idea. Espathra EX obviously helps a little bit more against Charizard, which sometimes maybe a Bayonet deck can struggle against. Yeah, we got another Guardi Bayonet deck with the Espathra once again. A bit more teched out because it's got Mew. It's got this Espathra here that does 30 plus 50 more damage each energy on your opponent's active. Could be good against Iron Hands, I guess, right? Because they'll have like, what, four energy on? Cool stuff. Um, got the Snorlax control with the Squovit. And we got another Arc Pile here. It looks like, okay, it's just a straightforward Arc deck. Arc Bib does have that Iron Leaf, still wants to help against Zard. Does play Hero's Cape, TM Devo, the Charon's Care, Double Eerie. So a little bit more of like the disruption stuff. So cool stuff. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Another pseudo Arc Control deck there. Another Tina. Another Lost Box here. Traditional Attackers, no Hoopa, but Double Moon. Another Lugia. We got another Arctina here. Another, yeah, very straightforward build of Arctina. Cool, cool. We got a Lugia. Another Pidgeyzard with the Eerie and the Turo. Got Shempao again. And then uh, we got some more future hands back to back. One with Iron Leaves, one with Leaves and Boulder. So a bit more of an attacker. Is that Rebu Pot in that list too? And then we got another. Okay, that one's more traditional for the build. Another Arctina here. Yep, another very straightforward build. No Aerodactyls or anything. We've got a Lugia. Another Lost Tina. <laughs> a lot of them. Two Arctinas back to back. We got Joe Bernard Armnipoke himself. Jomnipoke with the Arctina. And then we got another Arctina. Ooh, Squawkabilly in the deck. And a Mist Energy. So a bit more technology there. Another Shempao. And then, ooh, another Goldengo in day two. Let's go. It's another Goldengo Palkia. It's playing at the Silene, the Lady, and the Full Metal Lab for some extra bulk. Even it's got the TM Devo. And TM Evo's in the deck too. Interesting. I guess it's got Arvin kind of for the setup engine, which is kind of smart. Um, yeah, we got the Shempao. Another Pidgeot control. This might be the same 60 as Alessandro's list with the Noivern and the Buffalant. Double Luxray. Yeah. Another Arc. Ooh, Arc Gigas. Yeah, I like Arc Gigas. I don't hate the idea of Arc Gigas. Gigas is still a bulky Pokemon. Does relevant damage still. It's not terrible in this format, obviously. Um, yeah, Katina might be better, but Gigas is still not terrible. And it is cool to see a Gigas still get day two. Um Speaking of Arc, we got another Arctina below that. 
another future hands with the double iron leaves, five grass energy. And then we got another, wait, whoops, wrong Arctina. There's one below it, yeah. There's another Arctina here. Yeah, another straightforward Arctina. And then we got a couple more future hands to look at here. We got one future hands. We got one more future hands. And then we got another Charizard. Look at that. We got Bex Caliber, Shempow. Two more Zards. We'll quickly uh, click through these real quick. And then... Uh, Oh, it went to the top of the page. Oh, God. <laughs> we got to scroll back down. Okay, I think I know where I was because we were very close to an Alolan Vulpix Arceus deck. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, we got a Vul Vulpix R counter box deck playing the Gudra for the extra bulk attacker. It's got the Noivern. I did a video on Arc Vulpix Noivern on the main channel recently. If you want to go check that out, you can on the main channel. And I like the idea of it because the Noivern can obviously be really nice to wall off Ancient Box and Future Box. And you got the Gudra for some big bulk attack. And then you got the Vulpix, which can help a lot against stuff like Charizard and Shen Pao EX. A couple more Zards here. Let's quickly click on those real quick. And then we got another Golden Go in Day 2. This is nice to see a few Golden Goes in Day 2. Once again, playing Pelkia and the Canceling Clone. Another Dialga Matang in Day 2. A couple more Dialgas in Day 2. You'll love to see it. It's got the Bibril in there. We got another Pidgeot Control playing the Cloth and the Wigglytuff. And then we got another Zard. And uh, four more decks to go here. We got Shempow. We got Lugia. With the Noivern, the 1-1 one, one Noivern of the deck to help against the future deck, yeah. And we got another Goldengo. So yeah, a lot of Goldengo. Well, not a lot, but a few few more than I expected, to be honest. And then finally, rounding things out, we got a Charizard. And there you go. Those are every deck that made Day 2 at EYC. Like I said, a lot of variety. A lot of Lost Zone, a lot of Tina, Arc Piles, stuff like that. I think some of the standouts, obviously, Ursaluna Control is really cool. Lugia and Arc Tina not doing as well as some expected. Obviously, Stonks are up big time for... Giratina V-Star and Charizard EX. So there you go. Every deck that made day two really cool stuff. A lot of really spicy stuff within day two. And I'm excited to see what people play to Orlando. I'm excited for Orlando. I will be at Orlando and I cannot wait to go and figure out what the play is. The one thing I actually am surprised to not see in day two, there was no Raging Bolt in day two. Now it might be a bit early for people to kind of figure out a good Raging Bolt deck, but that is one thing that does surprise me that there was no Raging Bolt in day two. I thought for sure there'd at least be one in day two, but no one not in day two. But yeah, that's it for me on today's video. I'll leave a link, of course, to Limitless down below if you want to go check out um, the site for yourself to look at all the day two decks. If you're ever interested in any deck I looked at here and you want to build it for yourself, leave a link to it down below. Make sure to subscribe down below to the second channel if you're new. Catch you on another video here. Bye-bye.